It is way, way past seven o'clock, and this is the Zoom meeting of the Hadley Community Preservation Act Committee. Um, does anybody have minutes from the last meeting, or those are just, they don't exist? I think Paulette took them. Yep. I don't know where Paulette is or what she's doing, so I just don't know. I hope she's not like me because I signed in. There were two emails from David and I signed in to the last one. So I signed in and I was in next week's meeting. Uh -oh. And it said, it said, your host has another meeting open. And then I realized that my Zoom meeting was for the 21st. So then I got out of that one and I went and found the email that said the Zoom meeting for the 14th. So hopefully she's not in the wrong. Right. I hope not. Well, the reason why we have two meetings like this is for the new people is that we're being asked to spend an awful lot of the town's money and we what we're doing is tonight we just want to have people give a presentation then every uh cpa uh committee member will have a week to peruse it ask questions write down questions or anything at the next zoom meeting we will vote on whether or not to uh, let it proceed to town meeting. Now we are a, it was pointed out to me that we are an advisory committee. Once it gets past the CPA committee, it goes to the town admin, um, the town meeting. Um, the only thing I will say at this point is that our committee is the Community Preservation Act Committee. We are here not to provide funding for a lot of towns projects, but we are here to provide funding for preservation of towns infrastructure and so forth and so on. So I hope people keep that in mind. So, um, does anybody, uh, Mary, Mary, do we have some financials available? Are you there? No? Nope. Yes, yes, we do. Okay. Where do we stand financially? All right. We have quite a bit. Um, right. As of, is, as of when? This is as of Friday. Financial. Well, as of the 13th, as of yesterday. As um, of 9-13, okay. So the available funds, meaning they aren't already earmarked, yeah. is $1,941,155. Okay. And that includes what was just collected from the August um, real estate tax bill. Okay, now do we know if that includes, do we know what, which, how, the amounts in each set aside? The open space is 98,380. Wait a minute, slow down. Open is uh, 98,380. 98,380, yep. The historic is 23,000, $52.15. Uh, 23, 052. 2.15. 052.15, yep. And the housing set aside is 288,000. Yep. 339.46. And 46 cents. And that leaves um, the available general fund is a million five thirty one. 383.58. Now, does that include all of our, um, for lack of a better term, our, our outstanding debts that we've already promised? No, on top of that, there's the outstanding debts is 711,915.49. Yeah. So this is, uh, these are like um, out, outstanding, these, these, these are like uh, outstanding checks. It's the Hopkins Fields, it's the, um, the Russell School Preservation Study, it's yep. 
um, Plainville yeah. Cemetery restoration, the old Hadley Cemetery restoration, the Russell School roof, the Goodwin mm -hmm. repairs, um, and the Goodwin study phase two, and the historic maps, the library window, um, and some other small ones. So it's, but everything on here um, is still okay. It's within the two years. Okay, good. Now, would we subtract the 711 915 from the 1,941? No. no, it's it's the 1 million. No, you add it. So the total fund balance is those two together, is all that together. So the total CPA fund balance is 2,653,070. Okay, so as of uh, the 13th, we have $2.6 million in the CPA account. Am I Correct. reading it? Okay. Uh, does that include, because we, as a committee, we voted on to save, uh, to not go below 500,000. Does that include that figure? I, it is not adjusted for 500,000. Okay, so would we add the 500,000 to the outstanding? If you're saying that there's 500,000 not available, then you would reduce the amount of available funds from the million 941 to a million 441. Okay. And I can do that. 500,000 reserve, is that a good way to call yeah, it? Yeah, that's a good way to put it. We, we called it, I forget what we called it. We called it something different. So, so, we, so then we have a total of a million four forty one one fifty five available. A million four forty one, and then what? Five. Um, I'm oh. sorry, million four forty one one fifty five point one nine. Thank you. Yeah. And some of that available general balance will probably be transferred into the three set asides at the spring meeting because we always do that. 10%, Correct. Ten percent, ten percent of the latest entry. Correct. But, but that isn't that isn't effective now. So. Correct. Okay. Correct. 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 Um, uh oh, I had a question, but I didn't. Oh, so oh, okay. So, where would the, where would that five hundred thousand set aside? Would that come out of the general fund? It would have to. Okay. So in the general fund, we have one million. 31,383. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I understand where we're, where we're coming from and where we're going and whatever. The reason why we have the uh, 500,000, we got a request a while ago for a lot of money, uh, half a million dollars. And it came to our attention that, gee, maybe we ought to set some aside so that we don't go below that amount to get ourselves in trouble. So that's why we, we had that number. Okay. There. And so, okay. So how does everybody feel now? We know where we're, we know where we're spending the money and we know where it's coming from. Um, is everybody happy with the, the figures? Does everybody understand them? I believe Mary sent uh, the paperwork out that was very clear. And I remember in there, didn't you say that it matched up with the town accountant? Yes. Yep. Yep. These are based good. on the town accountants. So and that makes me very comfortable. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, the town treasurer, the town treasurer, we're, we're right. the new town accountant is. <laughs> yeah, he's in jail, right? <laughs> no, not. <laughs> so, um. It'll be easier to, Linda was wonderful. She got me what I needed. Okay, good, good. Okay, so, um, okay, we, we, we don't have any minutes. We did review the financials, so we know where we stand as a committee. Um, and uh, does anybody have any questions about to either Mary or myself or Amy about where we stand financially. Okay, hearing none. 
let's go over the application request for the special town meeting, which will be held, oops. I October didn't. 17th. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, 10, 17. Okay, um, first off, um, I'd like to recognize Mr. Alan Weinberg. Um, the Russellville Cemetery. Wait a minute. Do you have a special, re a certain request for the rest? Oh, there it is. Uh, and, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I did review all this stuff. When I get on camera, I get really nervous. So, North Hanley, Russellville Cemetery. Okay, I got it now. Okay, Mr. Weinberg, you have the floor. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Weinberg. I'm the chairman of the Hadley Cemetery Committee. And uh, I want to thank you folks for your past support of the cemeteries. And also Chris, like who I see is here also. We work very closely together to run the cemeteries. We take care of the advocacy. He takes care of the mowing of the grass and all the hard stuff. But uh, we are happy to uh, assist in keeping these cemeteries as beautiful places and special places that they are for the town. Um, I did send, Amy, did you send out uh, all my stuff? I had quite a bit of material for the three projects that we are actually asking for. Russellville is one, North Hadley is the other, and the third is the Hockenham Fence. Three separate projects this year. Uh, Everyone has all the documents that you sent us, Alan, and uh, Edwin, I printed them out for him. Yep, she did. Yeah, thank you very much, Amy. I You're truly welcome. appreciate that. <laughs> I couldn't even print them out for myself. Some of them are pretty big. Um, I also sent in um, a sort of a summary of the cemetery projects over the last few years. If anybody's interested right. in that, just to give you the big picture. No, I have that. Thank you. Okay, and the big picture really is that we're in the third year of a three-year program to uh, restore the gravestones in the five cemeteries, the five historic cemeteries that the town uh, has uh, d dating back to the 17th century. Mm -hmm. We have two, one, the Old Hadley is the oldest, and then North Hadley and uh, uh, Hockenheim are uh, 18th century and uh, Russellville and Plainville are early 19th century cemeteries. And we're, uh, as I said, we're on the three-year program. We've, we did Hockenham the first year. Uh, then we did, we're doing uh, Old Hadley or part of Old Hadley, not the whole place, but the middle part. Uh, and uh, Plainville this year, and that work has started. Uh, we, we anticipate it'll be done by uh, the end of the fiscal year. So I think Plainville will be done now. It's being done now. And then Old Hadley will probably won't get to till the spring. Mm -hmm. So the third year is what we're asking for right now. We're asking for your support for the last two cemeteries, which is Russellville and North Hadley, for the gravestones. Mm -hmm. I'll talk about the Hockenham fence later when it comes up. Thank it's you. Different, but the um, the Russellville cemetery uh, is located on Route 47, almost at the Sunderland line, and uh, there are, and we had a report on all the cemeteries done a few years ago, which, um, and I sent copies of the assessment reports for each cemetery. Mm -hmm. For Russellville, there are 42 gravestones in the, in the cemetery that need restoration. Estimated cost is 33,000. I don't know if you want me, if you want me to add anything to, to that. I mean, you can, you can see the reports, it'll show you each individual uh, gravestone and what needs to be done for it. This is very similar to what uh, we did for the other three cemeteries that are already in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're, you're asking, and I, again, I thank you for, you have an estimate of the total cost being $33,000. Yes. 
you're requesting $30,000 from the Correct. CPA. Thank you very much. I appreciate other people putting, having some money in, in the game for us. Thank you very much. Um, are you, and you're asking to, uh, to take the money out of the historical set aside. Is that correct? That's up to you. Well, I mean, that's where, that's where it would be if, yes, it's a historic project. We, right. don't, have, we don't have the funds <laughs> in the right. historic set aside. You have to take so. some out of the general. Well, what we would do in that case is we would take, we would, the reason, okay, backtrack a little bit. When last time I was chairman and I talked to uh, um, Boston, they said you have to drain the, the specific accounts first. Right. Then you take the money from the general, uh, general account. Yeah, I think so, that's what we did last year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And there is no rhyme or reason. Every town does it different. Every town will bring the account down to zero, and let it build up, bring it down to zero again. Some, some towns are pretty persimmonous with their money and they don't want to spend anything. And there's no rhyme or reason as to how it's be, it is to be done. So for the Russellville Cemetery, Greystone Res Restoration, um, we would ask for um, 31, 2, 3, minus uh, 2305.215 equals. So we would ask for to drain the account of the 23,052 uh, and 15 cents and get a balance of $6,947.85 from the general account. Is my math correct? I just want to say one thing. If it isn't all spent, then it gets returned to the appropriate bucket. And I think it gets a little confusing if it's split between like historic and general. Um, I'm, what do you mean? It say, say either asking for 30,000, say the project comes in at 27,000, 3,000 goes back to whatever bucket it was taken from. And it's, when it's split, I think that makes it a little confusing. Well, um, the other projects would probably have to become from the historical set aside. Well, there'll be gen there won't be any money. There in won't the be any money, so they would. We would uh, ask you to. We would just take it out of the general fund. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep, it does. It's the only way we can. Right. It's the only way we we can do it. So. Okay. Um, it was is that how does the rest of the committee feel do you guys feel that that is the right way of going about it or seems how boston kind of sets the rules and regulations we really don't have much of a say in it that's so fine. so yeah, we would go ahead no that seems like the logical way that one if we have several projects that in total exceed the particular set aside, then one of them is going to drain it and be mixed while the others will be one pot or another. So Correct. yeah, it Correct. seems like if, if you're going to, if you're going to drain an account, there's always going to be one project that's going to be split. Right. So as Mary said, it's not ideal, but that's, that's, that's the way it has to work. work. With. Okay. Right. Go ahead. Who, who said that? Um, Okay, so does that make sense to the rest of the committee that for the Russell, Russellville Cemetery Gravestone Restoration, uh, we're gonna take 23,052.15 and 15 cents from the historical set aside and take $6,947.85 from the general fund to fund this project. Does that make, did I do my math right? Yes. Okay, does that make sense to the rest of the committee? Yeah. Okay, yes. so we would take, um, well, seeing as how I've got a request in paper, I'm gonna make notes on it. So there, so um, 
23, oh, 52, and 15 historical, and 69, 47, 85 general. Okay, um, does anybody else have any questions about this um, request for funds? Um, is there a time period? I can't remember if, if they requested it for a certain time period. Um, what, what we're doing is we will do the uh, time periods and everything next week when we have a Zoom meeting and vote on these things. Um, this is just to present a project to the committee. And normally we have, we put a time limit on it. You got to use it by a certain time. And then if unforeseeable things happen, you can always go before the uh, per per permitting body, which would be town meeting, and ask for an extension. That's what we've done in the past. So, and the reason why we did that is, and um, Mary will tell you and Amy will too, that we got outstanding uh, requests for funds that go back years and years and years okay and we don't like that because it gets really hard to do the books so we put a time limit on and then once that time limit is reached then the funds either you use it or you lose it right that's 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 the thing normally since we impl implemented that prerogative or change we haven't had any uh, anybody having a problem of using the money. And the school committee has run into issues where it was out of their hands. And so months went by and they had to ask for an extension, which was granted at, uh, I believe, at the an annual town meeting or the special. I don't remember. But how, do, how do, uh, does anybody have any comments about uh, the Russellville Cemetery Gravestone res Restoration. I could just uh, uh, mention that we are planning, if we get approval from you folks and town meeting, we would go out to bid, or we'd ask the select board to uh, go out to bid. Uh, last time we'd usually do it around January and uh, we'd anticipate getting the work done in the calendar year 2021 hopefully starting in the spring and finishing up in the fall for both actually for all of our projects if all, all right ready. so uh miss mr weinberg do would you be upset to have like a two-year time limit on it oh two-year time it would be perfect okay that's fine how, how does the rest of the committee feel about putting a two two-year time limit on it please very good okay good. okay thank yeah. you um okay we did that one uh now north hadley uh, excuse me can i ask a question sure yes um the cemetery committee has really done some model cpa projects in the past with excellent results and um i really support all the work that his committee has done um alan is the contractor who won the bid last time available for this work uh and do you think that the same person will be doing the work this time as last time? I doubt it. Uh, and the reason I say that is because he is working right now on um, Plainville. And he he asked us if he could delay the old Hadley till next spring. He got a very late start because of the COVID. No, no big surprise there. Uh, he's a one man band and uh, he we don't want him to rush and he doesn't want to rush. So next spring, he'll be pretty busy with old Hadley. He, he's certainly free to bid on, on if we get approval to, on the other ones, but I doubt if it'll be something he can handle. But we, we've gotten a variety of people bidding in the past. Uh, we've had very good, um, very good luck with the contractors who have done the work and, and the quality of the work and the price, we've gotten very good prices. In fact, we're going to be returning about 50 grand for this round. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next spring. Thank you. 
Uh, Andy, I'm glad I'm glad you're here. I'm glad to see that you're healthy. And uh, I would like, uh, if if it's okay with the rest of the committee, I'd like to employ Andy because he has a reputation with uh, Boston to kind of send these through and make sure that we're not stepping on anybody's toes or doing something wrong. Would, how do you guys feel about that? Is, is that okay? If I employ an outside uh, person? Appreciate your help, Andy. Thank you, yes. Thank you very much, Mary, I appreciate it. By employ, Edwin, I think you mean use without pay, right? Well, of course. Okay. <laughs> Everybody else. All right. If somebody would send me the uh, the proposals, I will do um, that. I'll send them out. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, electronically, Edwin. Oh man. Somebody could, somebody could send me electric, so I can send to the Boston without the mail. Thanks, Amy. Amy, will you take care of that? If you want me to. Let let let's let's let let's start a procedure. Let's let Andy do it if he does if he's okay with with doing no, it. No, I mean uh, Andy needs the proposals, and I have them electronically, and I think Amy does as well. Right. Yeah, I can yeah. send the whole the whole packet. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Um, next. Thank you, Andy, for your pro bono. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, next is the North Hadley Cemetery Gravestone Restoration. North Hadley and um, well, Alan. Yep. Okay. Uh, this is a little bit bigger one. Yep. Uh, there's uh, 94. I think am I right? 90. Yeah, 94 st uh, stones that need to be yep. addressed, and the cost is. Uh, the estimate of 65, we're asking for 60 for that. Thank you. And if I could just mention, um, uh, sadly, uh, Margaret Freeman um, recently passed away. She's, she's, she's buried at that cemetery. Oh. And, and she was a stalwart member of the Historical Commission. And her husband, Jim, was a member of the cemetery committee for quite a while as well, until she got sick. Oh. So uh, it's a final resting place for, for the Freemans and for many North Hadley folks going back before the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it's taken a beat, that restaurant, that um, cemetery has taken a beating because a lot of trees are grown up. We've done a lot of tree work up there. Uh, the trees have interfered with the graves. Uh, we, had a, we had a big tree fall down a couple of years ago and knock over a couple of gravestones. It's a beautiful cemetery, but it, it really needs uh, some some tender loving care that we hope to give it this coming year. Well, good. And again, I will say that you were asked the total project is 65,000 and you're asking for 60. Is that correct? Correct. Well, thank you very much for kicking in your own uh, money on the on, on the project. Well, it's not not coming out of my pocket. We we do have some trust fund money. Right, right. I understand that. I get it. And um, uh, so, uh, how does the committee? Oops, I lost my. I Edwin, I'm on the cemetery committee also, and. Yep. I'm most familiar with Hakanam, and the work is just night and day for these stones. They're crooked, they're broken, they're leaning, they're, and they just go through and support the base again and clean them up and make them straight. And yep. the, it really makes a huge difference, the work that's done to help preserve it. Oh, I believe that. I, I, have, no, I, I, I have no problem. I, I do have a problem with a project that is, comes before the CPA that adds to the tax base of the, of the town. And I do appreciate that um, the cemetery committee is kicking in a little money to help uh, do their projects. I appreciate that. So, how does the how does the committee feel about taking uh, sixty? Is is it sixty thousand for the North Adley Cemetery? Yep. Yeah. 60,000 from the general fund? Yeah. Did I get that right, Mary? Yes. Aha, I'm learning. I'm learning. So um, uh, how does the rest of the committee feel about that? 
the 60,000 would be coming from the general fund. That's good. Yeah, I was impressed with the um, documentation in the proposal. Yep. Uh, you know, all the proposals. I learned a lot about cemetery restoration going through those. Oh yeah. And I will, um, I will um, echo Alan's thought that uh, North Hadley Cemetery is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's a shame to see it neglected so. And if we can do a little bit to make it nice, I think for everybody concerned, the families of the people who are resting there will be overly grateful. And I think um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> So, okay, whoops, I lost my agenda, there it is. Uh, North Adley Cemetery gravestone replacement, that's good. Um, are the two gonna be connected, Alan? Uh, no, we bid separately. Um, this past year, the bids for both Old Hadley and Plainville, the low bids were by the same person. But if they come in two different people, then we'll award two different bids. Okay, good. qualified. Good. Thank you. And you're you're happy with the work that that has been so far. So far, so good. Good. Thank you. Okay, now um, we are up to the Hakanam fence replacement project. It says to be determined. Well, it has been determined. Uh oh. <laughs> That, that was, uh, uh, I think that was from last time we met, or you met, and I, I said that we had a third project, this Hockenham fence thing, replacement project that we were still working on. We weren't sure how far we were going to get with it. We wanted to have a placeholder. So that's why it, I think it set, shows up on this agenda that way. But uh, we were very fortunate. Our consultant uh, worked very hard with us and the historical commission to put the, a package together and an application for you with a cost estimate. And uh, so I think we're, we're ready to present and, and discuss uh, the, the project. And I, and I forwarded um, her report, which contains the CPA application. Yeah. Um, at one point, uh, this was brought before the CPA committee long time ago and there was an issue of whether the fence was on town property or private property has that been rectified i never heard that issue before but um there was a survey done um of the adjacent property yeah not too long ago and uh, it turns out that there is a small piece of the wall at the very northern end that actually faces east west the most the the wall the 360 foot length wall that goes along Route 47 runs from the south to the north, right? Adjacent to the land. And this last little piece, um, which is about like eight feet long, only a couple of feet high, it was constructed probably at the same time as the last portion of the wall in 1957. Mm -hmm. And that happens to be on the, the neighbor's property. Um, and I think the reason that happened was because when the cemetery expanded, actually expanded a couple of times, and each time it, it, was, it received land donated by the Russells, who are the neighbors. And um, I think, in, I don't know exactly how it happened, but the wall, that part of the wall was built on their property. And that's not being, that is not going to be um, removed or replaced. Okay. So I, what? Um, okay. I, I'm having trouble finding the, the fence. It's the, the fence total was 68,000 and, and the committee is asking for 65,000 to be from, um, the CPA fund. Correct, Alan? That's correct. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, uh, Mary. So the total your your uh, the is sixty five from the CPA, correct? Correct. Right. 
So that would come from the general fund, correct? Yes. Aha, I'm getting the hang of this. It's scary. <laughs> okay, um, and when are you planning on uh, accomplishing this project, Alan? Again, assuming we get your approval and town meetings approval, we would uh, hope to get this done next year. Well, good. Um, okay. Yeah. It, it's and I, I, I will say, I, I haven't driven by, I haven't left the farm in uh, two or three months because of what's going on in the world. Yeah. yeah. But I will say it's starting to look a little shabby. And I'm sure that this, I'm sure that your committee is doing whatever they can to not make it look shabby. And you guys are doing a heck of a job. You're doing an excellent job. And I think that this is gonna make the whole cemetery, if a cemetery can look nice, because it's kind of like a mixed feelings of, you know, should a cemetery look nice or not? But um, I think this is gonna be a big improvement over the overall project. We hope so, and we, and we did, we have gotten a lot of input. Mary can tell you more about that from the Hockenham Village mm -hmm. residents. I think we got at least seven, so like seventeen or so. We had, we heard from twenty. Twenty. From Hock okay. Hockenham Village Association. We, we yeah. had a presentation. A presentation was done. At, at Hadley Media kindly uh, streamed it and recorded it, and people watched it. We've had a couple of meet, live meet, not live meetings, but Zoom meetings. Mm -hmm. yeah, people. Um, uh, you know, let us know what how they thought, and I would, I, I think it's fair to say that uh, everybody liked what we're proposing. They did have some thoughts uh, specifically about what's going to happen to the old wall, mm -hmm. the trap rock, and uh, you know the, that that will be removed. So we we're, we're going to uh, incorporate the that to the extent that we can uh, in the uh, final result. But I think everybody's happy with. Uh, going forward with retiring the old stone wall and putting up a, um, a very nice, historically appropriate granite um, fence or uh, a fence made of granite posts with a chain in between the posts. Mm -hmm. You can see this same type of uh, uh, fence at several of the uh, local res uh, cemeteries, not in Hadley, but Sunderland, Leverett and Deerfield all have cemeteries with this granite posts looks quite nice um, and there are others in the, in the state and in New England. It's very New Englandy, and uh, it'll be fun more functional than the wall because it'll parts of it will be a little bit further away from the road. We're able to move it a few feet so that'll be good and um, uh, they'll be anchored into the ground and uh, I think it'll be quite handsome. Uh, and, and another part of the project is that uh, We'll, we would like to reinforce the turf that's between the road and the fence. It's about six feet, six or eight feet where cars park now, but it gets quite muddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, we, we might be able to, um, if the bids come in okay, um, replace or, or dig up a foot or two of that, that turf, put down some um, packed crushed aggregate Put the turf back on it or reseed it so it'll look the same but it'll be much more uh able to handle v vehicles parked uh at there at the cemetery parking is very limited at that cemetery so that's another thing we hope to accomplish at the same time i had a question about that is the curb going to change no we're not, we're not touching the road okay but we are we have the fence the fence will be will be in a different slightly different um alignment but no, not much mm -hmm. but no we're not touching the road we're staying away from the road yeah. we did uh, we did meet with the um the cemetery committee met with the historical commission at the cemetery so we all could see the condition of the wall and and everything and denise is on the historic commission and they were very much in favor of this as well correct denise oh good, good. Yeah, uh, i did have a question favorite. on it go ahead uh, Andy, uh, Andy, I'm sorry, Alan. Um, I thought I read in the landscape architects uh, write up that they were going to try and save part of the wall, try and preserve yep. as 
Um, and I thought you said at the north end, but I didn't see that in the concept plan. Is that yeah. not shown? Yeah, no, it, it's, um, it may not be in the plan drawings, but okay. if, if you read the text, there's two things that we're thinking about doing. We haven't quite decided exactly, but yeah. we will, of course, the, the northern part, that northern little section, which is not on our property, that will stay, okay? Um, and that's, you know, but we're also um, contemplating putting a building, uh, two stone pillars or columns, if you will, mm. uh, of the trap rock. So they, they might be like two feet by two feet by three or four feet, something like that. Mm. In fact, I think there's a sketch of it in, in the package that we sent to you, mm -hmm. a sketch of a possible design. And, with, and there's two possibilities. We could have at the main entrance in the middle of the uh, uh, line of the fence, um, mark that main entrance with the, these two pillars instead of granite posts. Uh, we could also put one at the southern end um, to match the northern end. Hmm. Or we could just have one standalone cairn, I, I, that's my term for it, uh, near the main entrance uh, made of, uh, of the old trap rock. And we would probably have a plaque or something like that that would explain the history of the wall. Oh, good. Yeah, we definitely need to memorialize the stone wall because it is the wall is historic. Yeah. You know, and um, it's not the only fence fencing that's been at the cemetery. It's not the original fencing, but it's it has some significance, and we um, uh, think we, it, although it should be retired, replaced, we don't want to forget about it either. We de would like to memorialize it, and, and there are two or three different options, but there'll be something out there made of the old wall. Okay. You're good. Sounds good. Yep. Okay, How, does anybody else have any questions concerning this uh, project? What was the dollar figures that we were being, what was the estimate and our con contribution? $65,000 from the general fund. And the total was 68,000. Okay. The total was 68,000 and it, they're asking for 65,000 from the CPA general fund because the historical set aside doesn't exist anymore. Right. And um, now Alan, you know that uh, when it comes time for town meeting, it's up to you to sell it or it's up to the committee to sell this idea to the governing body of the town of Hadley. Yeah, we'll do our best. I'm sure you will. Well, thank you very much. You've done a very good job tonight. Um, that's good. Okay, um, anybody else have any questions for Mr. Weinberg? Seeing none, we will go on to the Hadley Common Landscape Concept Study. Uh, thank you, Alan. Thank you, folks. Oh, and I guess I'll see you next week. Yep. Okay, we're gonna. Have, it's, it takes us time to. Oh, no problem. Review this stuff and look at it and yep. come up with more. You you may get more questions. Yeah, if if anybody has a question, by the way, before the meeting that I you know need to get some information on, feel free to contact either me or Mary. Okay, uh, and we'll do our best to have that information for the next meeting. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much, Alan. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay, uh, Mr. Okafor, Okafor, excuse me, I apologize. Um, you're on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> thank you for having me. I thank the board and the committee for also having me. Mr. Chairman, I'm here to discuss um, the Hadley Common. It's, uh, the Hadley Common is a, an historical site in town, as we all know and also used for both community recreation and serves also as a open space. Uh, the Department of Public Works is requesting funds from the committee to assist us in the preservation, rehabilitation, and restoring of the open space for the community use. Um, if you look at uh, the commons, uh, through the years, the, because of increased commercial and vehicle traffic along Route 9, as well as new programs needed to activate community gatherings, 
uh, the common has also taken a big beating because of time and the years of not keeping up to today's events. So we are asking the committee to allow, to uh, give us or grant us some money to do some historical study, uh, landscaping concepts, and also to in in this uh, I submitted in the in the brief I submitted to the committee. You also I also listed there the concept design deliverables. That means within this concept design, the public will be will have opportunity to add make a statement of how the concept will look at. Uh, we'll, the thinking within this 30,000 that we are requesting, we give us two public hearings before the select board. We also uh, submit uh, some renderings and different concepts of how we think uh, based on other inputs from the community and also from the landscape architect uh, that will enhance this uh, what I call jewel. It's a jewel in town. It's a big, nice, beautiful space uh, that our goal is to maximize the purpose and this beautiful space. Now, Mr. Chairman, I believe that uh, if the committee is able to grant us this opportunity in terms of the funding, uh, this concept will be such that uh, it will bring us back to the committee, but at that time, we'll be able to know how much it will cost. Our thinking is to have a, it's going to be three to five year program, depending on how much it will cost, and also how the committee and the authorities in town uh, looks at this uh, concept. Now, the landscape architect that we are talking to happens to be one of the best in the Commonwealth. They've done many programs, both around the area. The closest one to us is the Pulaski Park in Northampton. They've also done a couple of others in um, Cambridge, Boston areas. And so they are willing to come before the committee and uh, as soon as if that is needed, uh, they are also willing to, uh, eventually they'll be coming before the town, before the select board, to, so it's a, it's a concept that we think will um, not only beautify and keep the space, but the surrounding environment, we also benefit from this project. So my coming before the committee today is that the committee should please um, take a look at what we're trying to do and see if uh, the committee can give us uh, a helping hand. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, a, a question that comes up this, you're asking for a sum of money, which is $30,000 just to do a study. Is that correct? Yes, it's, uh, it's to do the concept of how this, uh, this uh, open space, this pre uh, prestige environment area can be brought to a new phase. Yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, okay. Um, how does the rest of the committee feel about this project or about this request? The project, uh, once, we, once these people do their study, they're gonna come up with a proposal, is that correct? Correct. And then it's, it's your intention of either uh, contracting it out or doing it yourself over a period of time, is that correct? Oh, is there a, uh, we, we, we end up, uh, Send, put in a bid to go out, contractors, uh, licensed uh, landscape architects and designers will be involved. Uh, and uh, we also, part of that program, Public Works will do some of it, but the major event will be uh, sent out based uh, after the concept has been approved by the town. Yes. Okay. And now, uh, would that have anything to do with the infrastructure underneath the town, uh, underneath the roads, or just on um, what we drive by and see? The, our, the, at this point, is what we see. But if the study may recommend otherwise, or the public, in the course of uh, their input, may recommend otherwise. But for now, our, our thinking is based on what we see. Okay. Thank you. 
I, I, I into that what you just said it would be nice to see um what the cost would be so such as underground utilities instead of having all those um on the common it would be nice to have more of a historic look and and have the underground utilities yes. because of the this concept uh proposal we we the we are we, the utilities are going to be underground the what we see today with all the poles and all the uh will be proposed to be underground we our goal is to bring a concept that will meet today's uh to this requirement uh is it is to preserve what we have we we don't think that the landscape architect will be aligned will be proposing the same um various um, light poles or electrical poles or other utility poles in, in today's uh, architecture and design usually we go with uh, underground is is safe is safer it's also it, it give us more space for the concept of what we're trying to do good um as far as you know is the does the town of hadley own the common or are there various landowners involved as uh, far as i know the select board has a committee in charge of the commons now in the course of we in the course of this approval if we approve we will we'll be talking with the planning board also yeah and we'll be also be talking with the historical society so mm -hmm. in the course of this landscape architect doing their work we may this we may find out if there are other owners but in from where we are right now we think the common belongs to the town of Hadley. okay thank you and uh, i noticed there's a number of houses alongside the outside of the con or around the perimeter of the common and those houses are on their own private lot they're not owned by the town correct yes correct aha i got that um does anybody else have any questions about this request for funding of uh thirty thousand dollars to come from the general fund i have a question sure does the dpw have any goals in mind like i am thinking of all the traffic that goes down that road and the Eslon parking are there like specific problems that you're looking to solve yes uh what of the what of the um as i said the because of the commercial and route nine enhancement one of the things that we have issues today uh is exactly what you talked about we if we part of the concept of the new design and uh, the uh, preservation of the commons. We include uh, it, CPA money may, may not fund that section of it. We are will be proposing uh, additional lane, but that lane will be for parking. Right now, many communities, what they do in events like this, if you look at around the common, we don't have good parking space. We also don't have parking garages where we can employ people to use. But if to keep this uh, new concept going, I, our goal is to, at the end of this process, if the town decides to uh, begin uh, approve the concept and the and then we we'll begin to go into design and um, construction phase, or we would like to do that, and then that fund generated from that those parking can also be put in a fund that can be used to keep the maintenance of the common going but that's um, because you're right the parking has always been a problem dpw has uh, very much concern about the parking and the select board uh, is also concerned because they've told us a couple of times to put some signages but because there is no other way we can enforce we haven't we haven't been given the authority to enforce parking but i think with this project that will be part of the public discussion and i think at the end there will be a better concept or better um, understanding on that will solve not only the parking problem it will also solve the ability to cross route nine right now you see that the way route nine is set up is very uh, is very hazardous in crossing route nine so we also think that with this concept we'll be addressing that proposal uh, that uh, issue also I know from the historical commission's perspective, we're concerned about parking 
or the shape of the common being altered in any way. So parking or any type of pavement going on to the common would be problematic from our point of view. I agree with you. Because it's a preservation issue, uh, public works also agree with that concept. But because at, 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 because at the level where the final conclusion on the use, how the end product will look like, that would be issues that various entities we discuss and also the select board, historic committee, CPA and other, and the town meeting in general, so that uh, that will be beyond public works uh, control. It will be something that people like the historic committee has, we know you have, they have a, a lot to say on that. Also, CPA will have a lot to say on that because of the, the funds itself. The concept, not every part of the concept, I think CPA money may be able to, to work on. For example, part of pres preservation is fine, but I don't know if CPA money will be able to be part of putting a new parking meters or new other enhancement that, but, but I, I look at that as something that we haven't gotten to that level yet. Mm -hmm. uh, the first phase is where we are right now to come up with something where the town entities and the town leadership and the general public can look at and maybe make some comments to come up with a final product that we will then set out to bid for and get a, a cost estimate and, and then different other approaches that may, be, that may follow. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions or comments from Mr. Okafor? For the, yes. go ahead. Yes. It is really nice to have the professional study done because it's nice to I get agree with professional you. input. Right, and I, I agree with you. And the way the things are, if we have a study, we, we as a town can decide, well, it looks really good. We'll, we wanna do it, but now is not the time. So we can always put it on the shelf and pull it off the shelf at, at the appropriate time. So I don't, I personally, my opinion, don't have a problem with doing a study. I myself would love to see the common improve or prettied up because it's it's dated it's reached its life expectancy and it needs time to update it i wouldn't want to see it destroyed or uh, done away with i think that's a defining character of the town of hadley and that's what i'd like to preserve so that's how i feel about it um does anybody else have any other comments um so um, can, I, can, I, can I ask two questions? Sure, go ahead, Andy. Um, hi, Chris, I really enjoyed meeting with you last year, uh, working on the, uh, the details of this proposal. Um, the, I have uh, two questions and uh, two really quick comments. Um, first, there are uh, limitations on using CPA money on land that is not already in preservation. Uh, and it's possible that the town common is not in preservation as much of the town owned land is not. Um, so hopefully the person who does the study can do some research and find out what protections of the land are already in place. Good point. Uh, whether it's, um, was it chapter 97 uh, or uh, some kinds of preservation restrictions or something like that. So I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, CPA money might not be able to be used if those preservations aren't in place. Also, there are several town bylaws limiting construction and changes to the common. Um, so the designer should also research that and make sure that things aren't proposed that are against the, the town bylaws. I'm not sure where you'd find out the history of those. Um, uh, anyway, I think that's that's kind of important. Um, is, the, is the study for the design going to be the whole common or just the Connecticut River to Route 9 section? Uh, the, our thinking uh, for DPW is the whole common. Okay. 
we think that uh, it be it would not we would it would not be our thinking may not actualize itself if we do it in section. So we think the whole common so that uh, that will include that will give us a way also as I said earlier. If you look at root nine the way it is right now, uh, we also want to be able to find a way to bridge both common both sides. And also, if you look at the dike, the dike, since DPW, we, we did some few enhancements. The dike has, and uh, it, the traffic has increased, which is good. Uh, it's well utilized. And it's also, so we also think that in this, the common can also uh, properly link with the dike so that the whole, as I said earlier, it's a jewel, it's a good space. And with, some uh, some input from planning some of the things you asked of in terms of pre, um, historical and what we can do and what we cannot do uh, we think probably the planning board may help us a little bit in that hist history um, also probably other entities who but for now those were the the landscape architect they are used to this kind of research because of things they've done in other communities. So I, I think that, that they will be able to um, at least give us some research, not only within Hadley, but also through the county records, uh, whatever they can find. So that yeah. will help us, uh, yes. I think that's good. One, one suggestion I would make to you to help the proposal along, um, sort of amplifying something that Denise said, is to come up with two or three statement of principles for what you hope to get out of the design. Um, so if your goal is not to change the common in a significant way, but to make small changes, you should say that. Uh, if it's the opposite, you should say that. Um, just so people have some idea, a broad outline of what the goals are uh, even before the study is done. I think that'll help you a lot in town meeting. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm very grateful. Thanks for the... And I'll, I'll just throw in to Andy's uh, comment that I will um, check with my colleagues on the planning board to look into any restrictions that we may have built in to zoning. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Does anybody else have any comments for the uh, co Hadley Common Landscape Concept Study? All right, Mr. Okafor, thank you very much for your time. And we will continue on with the, our last proposal. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody the um the to present the Hadley emergency rental assistance for COVID nineteen. I think I saw Molly Keegan in the list. Oh, you did. Yeah, there are actually uh, three of us here. Ah. So, oh. hi everybody. Um, so Molly Keegan, I'm co-chair of the Hadley uh, Housing and Economic Development Committee, along with Dylan Mance, um, who is here as well. He's waving from the Golden Gate. <laughs> Um, and then Amy Fiden is also a member of our committee. And we have a guest this evening. Um, we have Jane from the Valley CDC, who's been uh, extremely helpful to us in this regard as well. Okay. <laughs> um, so if it's okay, I'll just give a quick background. And then um, Dylan's done a lot of work on this. So I want to give him the opportunity to talk about kind of the, um, the nuts and bolts aspects of how this program might be run. Mm -hmm. um, but just generally speaking i mean as everybody's well aware um obviously we're living in you know not to overuse the phrase unprecedented times but um given where we are at in september and the reality that massachusetts is one of the states suffering most from um, prolonged unemployment and we know that we have many folks in the area i mean you just pick up the newspaper the furloughs at the university area colleges so, you know, I think that there was some hope that perhaps with a couple of stimulus packages, it would get people through. 
Um, we also know where the stimulus packages stand in Washington right now. So it's very much our expectation that some people are going to hit a wall um, and it's probably coming um, this fall. So uh, we became aware of the fact that some other area towns have put together what is being referred to as a uh, COVID-19 rental relief package. And what we're looking to do is to um, earmark um, if CPA would approve it and obviously town meeting up to $50,000, um, no more, that would be set aside um, in a pool of funds to be made available to Hadley residents only. Um, this is a residential relief program, so this is not something to help area businesses, um, not that they're not suffering as well, but it's very much focused on the individual. Um, and it would target uh, people who have been harmed specifically due to COVID-19, meaning that they can prove that they've lost their job, they've been furloughed, whatever, um, and also people that meet very specific um, income guidelines. So that's the quick background. Um, I believe the aspect of the CPA funding that we're looking at is the uh, community uh, rental, you know, the housing component, which is where we would um, hope that those funds could be set aside from. And um, to be honest with you, uh, we have done some research. We are modeling our program after one that Sunderland has effectively put in place. But erring on the side of full disclosure, we are still kind of crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Um, and I think Dylan can speak to that shortly. And also um, Jane from Valley CDC, because we, we need to really kind of hone in on those income guidelines. Um, I think they may need to be refined. Jane was making some suggestions as, as late as today in that regard. And then um, in terms of the administration of the program, clearly we don't want the Hadley Housing and Economic Development Committee or CPA or anybody else dealing with applications. So the intent would be to uh, work through a third party who's well-versed in dealing with those sort of low-income um, uh, screening criteria, et cetera. So Dylan, do you want to yeah, so reaching that? out to um, Sunderland to see who is going to administer their program. Uh, we found out through them that the Franklin uh, Housing Authority was going to do that outreach and qualifying of potential residents. Um, we reached out to Valley CDC and Jane's here to see if they had the ability to do that. Um, they actually uh, right now focusing on more of the business side, um, but put us in touch or is in the process of putting us in touch with Community Action Pioneer Valley and Claire Higgins up there. And uh, uh, we're gonna reach out to them here shortly this week, uh, but they might, they have been doing this as a, uh, a thing for different towns in the area. And so they would be someone that we would go to um, to kind of do the outreach, find people that are, uh, that would qualify for the program and then also qualify uh, so the work wouldn't fall back onto uh, either the CPA or to our committee. Thank you. Um, maybe, uh, is, does Jane want to give a little presentation now or is it time for questions? I would, I would just add a couple of comments from um, an industry um, experience uh, perspective. Um, one that I would just say that I think um, the timing right now, as Amy pointed out, is going to be very critical and even more so for some households who are quite terrified of what's going to happen um, if the eviction moratorium is lifted. I'm sorry, Molly, you said that, didn't you? <laughs> um, uh, um, but um, also, I think it's important to point out that this also helps the owners um, the rent, the, the landlords of places that have got these income qualified residents, it helps them to continue to run their properties well, um, because this kind of loss of income is a huge hit for those landlords. So I do think it would um, be quite helpful. And uh, Claire Higgins and her crew, if they were able to do this, this is just what they do. Um, it would be another pool of funding available to Hadley residents and uh, um, you know, I just think it'd be a really great move. Um, and, and as was mentioned, um, other towns and municipalities are doing the same thing. 
Okay, the, the first question that I have, I don't know who to address it to, so I'll just throw it out there. Is that a approved use of CPA funds? And are you gonna be back next year asking for more money? Who wants to handle that? <laughs> I can, Edwin. Um, we believe it is an approved use of CPA funds. I mean, obviously that's something that the CPA committee is gonna to have to, um, you know, get their heads wrapped around in it and agree with us on. Um, but we, we have no idea. I mean, I, I would love to be able to say, no, we have no intention of coming back. Um, to be honest with you, if we're in a position where we're coming back and looking for additional relief because we're still in dire straits next year brought about by this pandemic, um, I think there are going to be a lot of conversations happening around town. I mean, that's so I'm I'm hopeful that this is is a, a one shot deal. Uh, the idea would be to again set aside the fifty thousand dollars. If you look at the proposal, you can see that the rental limits are pretty modest. Um, you know, one individual isn't going to be taking you know ten thousand um, dollars out of the pool. So we think that these dollars can stretch. Um, and be quite helpful uh, in the short term. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, also to reiterate, I know um, typically the CPA committee wants to make sure that it's very clear, you know, what happens to any unexpended funds, and absolutely those funds would be coming back to the committee. We're asking for up to a two year time frame, but again, just as an individual living here right now, I really hope that we'd be returning any unexpended funds sooner because. The ship has been righted, but I suspect we're going to be in this for a little bit of a, a haul. I, I I think so too. But and now the first question you an, you answered one question that I proposed at supper time with my wife, and and now will this spur an influx of people moving into town to take advantage of this? Uh, throw money at me. Will that? No, I think the intent is it would be for existing Hadley residents. So if we needed to put some sort of a, um, uh, you know, like if they do with kids declaring their their street address when they're going to college or whatever, I'm I'm sure we could take a look at that. Okay. Yes, yeah, I I think that's um, uh, important uh, because I wouldn't want to have a big carrot and say, "Oh, come to Hadley, come to Hadley." Will will we have this money available and we'll throw it at you? That's I have a grave reservations about that. I do believe that the way we're living now and what we're doing now is going to be around for a while, and some something needs to be done. Is this the right answer? I don't know. Is this an answer to plug the hole that a lot of people are in? Def definitely. This I don't think I don't see this being a long term project. I think it's going to be um, just a short term help you get over the hump and uh, hopefully things will straighten out and we'll get better. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. And um, the way I understand this, if someone wants to access these funds. They have to apply to an existing um, organization to advocate for them to have access to these funds. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Uh, and what Sunderland has done as one of the qualifying uh, pieces to the application uh, is to show that you are financially impacted by COVID uh, and that you have a negative impact and also that you are within a threshold of the area's median income. Um, so this wouldn't be available to people that are above that area median income. Um, and so we're trying to focus on the people that need the help most and, and not just create some sort of incentive program to drive new, new people here. Good, thank you. Um, what does anybody else have to ask these fine individuals? Is Sunderland also funding through the CPA, the rental assistance? Yeah. I think East Hampton did it as well in the spring. 
Um, I, I have some questions. This, I'll, just to let you know, this is actually the business I'm in. We don't have any apartments in Hadley, but I'm, I'm very familiar with renting. And also certainly some of the troubles both landlords and um, renters are having. Um, one question is, would the money go to the landlord directly or will it go to the um, renter who then is supposed to give it to the landlord? I know in Sunderland they said they were doing it directly to the, or East Hampton's doing it directly to the landlord. I think I that's the, oh sorry, go ahead. No, I was because I think that's the intent that you would want to make sure that those funds get into the hands that they're intended to receive. One, one thing you might want to think about is um, helping people or requiring them to see if they can get some funding other places as well, like RAF, the rental assistance for families in transition, quite a few million dollars have been put into that by the state and they've relaxed the requirements. It used to be you had to be evicted, now it's just you're impacted by COVID and people may not realize that there's, um, they pay up to $4,000. So, you know, it might be helpful if, if just to help people go to that first might stretch the these funds farther um, if it you know they could get both but it's it's um it's a way to to help out another question i had is it's a you know you propose up to three months i mean if somebody's behind a month can they apply and then if they need to apply again can they continue to apply until they've used the three months or do they have to you know only apply once some some pro programs you have to, you only get one shot. So people wait the three months to even apply, um, which is harder for the landlord and harder for the, the renter at times. Um, so it's another thing to think about. Could they, could they apply? And then if they have to apply again for another month, they could do that later on. Um, just something to think about. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's a great point. And, uh, after our call and when we figure out a time to meet with Claire Higgins and discuss further, uh, I'll be sure to bring that up and ask what she's been doing with the other communities around here. If, if this passes at town meeting um, in October, do you have a sense of how quickly it would be available to people? Um, I'm sure the need is, is certainly great. Well, I, I think um, in large part, Mary, that's going to depend on how quickly, if we, if it is community action that we work with, um, which we're very hopeful it will be, then making, find out from them what their lead time has been with their other projects. Um, but clearly the goal would be to have it up and running as quickly as possible. Yeah. I, I think it's a good use of the funds. I think Hadley's doesn't seem to be on the brink of needing those funds for expanded programs in other ways. And, and it's certainly unusual times. And if it's allowed by the CPA, I think it's, it's a big help. I, I have no sense of how many people might need it right now in Hadley. Um, you know, if the, if the maximum would be 17 people for three months at a thousand, but it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's hopefully it'll go it'll it'll make a dent right um hey andy are you there i am here okay um in your experience uh, a program like this using cpa money is that something that is a uh, kosher for the cpa committee to use yeah there's a a great um a section on the cpa coalition website about how other towns have set up this type of program. So it is definitely CPA approved use of funds. Okay, thank you. Um, and, and I would definitely encourage you to go to the website and, uh, and check it out because um, uh, they have very detailed examples of how other towns have run this kind of program. Aha, uh -huh. good, thank you. Yeah, um, I think it's a great use of CPA funds. Oh, I agree. And um, it, would this be something that you could forward to Stuart Saginaw? And I, I, de I definitely will. Although usually he takes more than a week to get back to me. Well, maybe this but, will but we'll try it. Higher under him. We'll try it. <laughs> yeah. Um, if uh, after the committee is done asking questions, I have some I'd like to ask too. Okay. Um, 
Does anybody else have any comments about Molly Keegan's uh, proposal and other? I have one more question sure. that just made me think. Um, it says it's for Hadley residents, but it's going directly to the landlord. Does it matter where the landlord is? Good question. No. no. I wouldn't think so. Not typically. Because the intent is really to help. I mean, as Jane said, obviously the landlords directly benefit as well, but the intent is really to keep people in their homes. Yeah, I like the idea. I mean, I think it's Community Preservation Act and we're trying to preserve community by not having the marginalized vulnerable neighbors fall off the table. So thank you, Molly. I, I think that's a very noble idea. Mm -hmm. Well, again, this is just being clear. This is the Hadley Housing and Economic Development um, yeah. Committee. There's several people on that group. That, right. Oh, that are, yeah. Right. Your face is showing up on my screen because you were talking. So, but yes, I speak to you and to um, was it David? Um, Dylan. Dylan. And Amy. Um, all the other members. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so the request, if I'm reading this, would come out, out of the housing set aside, is that correct? Yes. Yes, I, yes, it would, the 50,000. Right, so that would bring that down to 238. 238, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Edwin, if I may, can I ask a couple of questions? Sure, go ahead, Andy. Um, is there any way to find out how many people in town might be eligible for this program? Um, the total number of renters in town or something like that? I wonder if anyone's demographics have that kind of income data yeah. on, on the renters. It would be a, a com if you don't mind me taking a stab at that, no. I think it would be a combination of some private information about who owes rent who would be income qualified. I think you wouldn't really know that. I, I think you would just wanna set up your criteria to be clear so that people know whether they would be eligible or not. Um, I just think it'd be too, uh, you'd have too much of a mix of different types of landlords who do and do not have access to the data that would tell you that. I, Andy, I wanna say one thing on that too is that for the residents that we have that already get um, public help, whether it's through housing or, um, net, you know, any of the programs or even social security or disability, their their monthly income has stayed consistent. They've gotten their checks. Um, it's it's a lot of the people that you know aren't are lost their job or furloughed or um, you know just that are mostly impacted. I think. Right. Well, the reason why I'm asking is because you don't want to ask for $50,000 and then get 3,000 people to apply for it, and then there's not enough money. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, my next question is, how did you arrive at the $50,000 amount? Is it an estimate of need, or is it just a nice round figure? Um, so how did you come up with the $50,000 ask? Um, it was really based on what some other area areas have looked at. So like East Hampton was mentioned, um, they have a much more significant ask, I believe, but if, as you would imagine the population is significantly different. And I think we targeted Sunderland from the standpoint that Sunderland is very different from Hadley um, in that Sunderland actually has a, a, probably um, many more rentals than Hadley does because Sunderland has all of the, the uh, complexes. And when you think about 116 and then the apartments up on 47. So we thought that if, um, you know, if Sunderland had targeted the 50,000 and that was based on some demographic work that they did, that that should be sufficient for Hadley because we tend to have, as, as you know, we don't really have apartment houses. You know, we have, um, a couple of multi-units, but then primarily it would be residential houses that might be um, rented out to tenants. 
So I wish I could tell you there was more of a science behind it, Andy, but that was, um, we thought that was a reasonable basis. No, I think modeling it after what other towns have done is a good answer. Um, uh, my concern is that 50,000 might not be enough, especially if you're going to have to pay a vendor to run the program for you. Um, maybe you should ask for more. So it's 50,000 for the landlords and the tenants plus whatever it costs to run the program. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be my suggestion. I mean, there's almost a quarter of a million dollars in the housing account. There's plenty of money. Um, so just make sure you ask enough to give the benefits and to run the program without having to subtract from the amount for benefits. I think East Hampton asked for 200,000 um, and they have a lot of rental units. Um, Sunderland has a huge amount. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get more, um, more specific data uh, of, you know, no, um, anybody that I talked to or anybody on the committee that talked to anybody couldn't really find a particular data source for this, but maybe between, you know, Dan Zadonik and the town clerk's office or something, we might be able to at least hone in on a little bit more specificity about the rental population here. Right. Well, it's better to ask for too much and to have to give some back than to not have enough for everybody who's in need. Yeah. I guess that's my, that's my point. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there was one other thing I was going to ask you, but I can't remember. <laughs> okay. Maybe it'll come back to me. Okay. Thank you, Edward. No, you're welcome, Andy. Thank you for your, those, those are very good questions. Um, does anybody else have anything for this, uh, for this proposal? No. All right. Um, very good. Uh, we'll take this under advisement. Andy, if you can, uh, contact the uh, Boston and see if they, if this, if this is a okay use of CPA funds and under what conditions. And I would appreciate it. I'll give I'll give you a call and we'll discuss things. I'm more of an analog type of guy. If that's okay with the committee, if 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 anybody has any issues, Andy has been he's got a uh, pretty good rapport with Stuart Saginaw, who runs the uh, program for the state of Massachusetts. And uh, as he knows and everybody else knows, I'm really not an electronics guy. <laughs> and so. Um, I like to do things more analog, not digital. So uh, seeing no other questions, we'll, we'll take this under advisement. And we thank you very much for your input, Molly and Jane and uh, Dylan. And thank you for your time. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, OK, number five on the agenda is review of gravestone assessment report for North Adley Cemetery. Does anybody know about that? Hey, hey, Michelle. Does anybody know any, about the review of the gravestone assessment report? I I don't know why that's on there. I don't know why neither, Amy. It, it's you know maybe it's 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 four B is the North Hadley Cemetery, so maybe it just got put on there twice. Well, it's it's something separate that Alan had sent me. Um, and I, I believe it was what he had done prior. So with the last ask. Right. I remember seeing something in my, in the pile of the paper that he was going to be returning some money. Is that correct? We did last, it was voted last town meeting to return it, um, for last year's, but maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know neither. So I don't know what that. I thought I saw it, but then I didn't. No, I think it's on the warrant that there is some money to be returned this year too. Would you, in in your purview, would that be what that refers to? Yes, but yes. I think he wanted just That's to right. show us that, um, also to show us what kind of job has been done, what how our money was spent. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So that cover in the same thing with item number six, it would be the Russellville Cemetery. Um, I'm assuming that is along the same vein. That's and, my understanding. Yep. I, I don't know because those are the ones we're asking money for. 
Russellville and North Hadley haven't been done. Plainville and um, Old Hadley are the ones in process and they're not finished. So well, I'm, I'm wondering if that was for a previous project. I don't believe so. I think that's the current projects is Russellville and North Hadley. Well, didn't they, didn't we put fences up or something ar around those cemeteries around Plainville and Right, but that well, was that was several years ago. Right. Yeah, yeah and that's all closed out. Yeah. Are we sure though? It's not on the list of outstanding projects. Uh -huh. Aha. Why don't we just table it to next next week, and then we'll just double check with Alan. Sounds good to me. Um, does anybody else have any other business to bring before the committee? Yes, I have one other thing. Oh, yes. Um, the, the old maps project. Yes. Um, when I was removed from the committee, uh, I felt I was no longer responsible for the conclusion of this project. Um, and I forwarded all the, the bills, invoices, and that kind of thing um, to town hall. And I'm still getting emails and mails about when you're going to come pick up the maps, when you're going to pay us mm -hmm. from the Conservation Museum. Uh, so I just was wondering if anybody had heard anything. I um, haven't heard anything. It would be a tragedy if something happened to the maps. So I don't know if anybody from the committee would want to check or pick up the ball or anything like that. But they're, they're done and they're ready to be picked up. Great. Do you want to forward those uh, some of those emails to us, Sandy? And uh, you know, you can forward it to me. And if one of the members offers to do it, I'll distribute that to them. Otherwise, I'll. Uh, if I still have them, I will definitely forward them to you. Uh, it's a long drive, but the museum is really nice. They were very nice to us and let us get see the museum for free and showed us the conservation area. It was pretty cool. Uh -huh. Oh, good. Okay, um, Mark, are you, so you, 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 you will contact uh, Tom? Yeah, if he'll forward the information to me um, and no one else uh, jumps up and wants to t look into it or take a trip to the museum, I guess I will. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. no, I've, yesterday was Sunday, it's supposed to be a day of rest. I worked from 6.30 to a little after four and finally I was tired, so. I'm just maxed out right now. Yeah. And I'm sure other people feel the same way, but um, okay, does anybody- In my other committees, uh, we usually assign things to those who are not in the room, so we could dump it on Paulette. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll work. <laughs> I gonna... could burn my bridges before she's even met me. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you you said that too. <laughs> but, okay. Um... And I have a question. Sure, go ahead. One of the items on the outstanding projects list goes back to 2016. I, I guess it's before there was the two year limit put on it. And it's, um, it's Lake Warner monitoring and it's 200, there's a balance left over of $216, which I'm sure is long out of their mind. I mean, right now, if it's not spent within two years, it automatically goes back to the right, right. bucket. That may, that may have been why we implemented that two-year rule. Well, I'm just curious how that 216 gets taken, you know, gets returned back. Is it something the CPA committee follows up on? Is it something the town follows up on? Um, to my knowledge, it's... David would put it on. If he knows about it, he does it all the time. Uh, so okay. Linda Sanderson, if, you, she meant, if we mentioned it to her, or, or David Nixon, a lot of times some of the old, old stuff. And then he reaches out sometimes to whoever. I see it all the time happen. All right, I'll, I, I'll be glad to reach out to the two of them because it's they've asked for money since then for monitoring. So mm -hmm. I think it's probably. The other question I have, just something to think about for next week is the um, $30,000 Hadley Common Landscape Study. Mm -hmm. Would that come under um, open space or would that come under, it can't come under historical because there's no money. So I was curious if it's more open space or if it should be general. Um, um, I have written down general fund. 
Now, I don't know if, uh, if the common has a restriction on it, it'd be okay to use any pot of money, for lack of a better term. If there aren't restrictions put on it, then I don't know how we, could, we would go about it. That's what I'm hoping that we can find out by contacting Stuart in Boston. There's restrictions in that the town has bylaws on how it can be used and how you get permission, but I'm not sure if that, it's not, I, I'm right. not sure it has a conservation restriction or anything. I, I don't know neither. I, uh, you're asking the wrong person. I honestly don't know. Um, to answer your question, I think I would put it under the, out of the general fund. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, if anybody else doesn't have anything, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Huh. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. okay, good. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I don't know if I can vote or not, but I did anyway. And I'd like to thank you all for attending. Andy will be in touch. And if uh, who is responsible for emailing you all those proposals? I think Amy said she'd do it. Okay, good. Thank you, Amy. You've been very helpful. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, everyone, have a very good night. Thank you. See you all next Monday. Yep. Thank you.